looking at the Panther pit in Napanee, where tonight one of Elkhart County's great basketball rivalries renews for the 89th time. The Northridge Raiders have come a calling on the defending 3A state champion Northwood Panthers on this edition of the 46th game of the week. And how you doing, everybody? Alongside Angelo DiCarlo and with the Hall of Famer Bo Hunt court side, it's Chuck Freebie. So good to have you with us for another exciting night of basketball on TV 46. The Northridge Raiders lost a ton of talent from last year's team. They don't have any seniors on this year's squad, and still they managed to put together a 10 and two record. How have they done it? It's really impressive that they got to this point. Maybe they're ahead of schedule, but the fact that they have three coaches, kids, and a quarterback in their starting lineup makes them a little older than a team that would otherwise not have a senior. But either way, very, very impressive for Scott Radiker's squad to be 10 and two. Meanwhile, Northwood, while well, you knew they were gonna lose a lot from that state championship team, Kate Brenner and Ian Rosh are going on and playing in the Crossroads League. What they do have back, their point guard, a big man, and some talented seniors who are filling their roles well. They lose four of their top six players from the state championship team. The next four guys go play for a state championship in football. So it took a little bit for them to get it together. They started four and three. They've now rattled off four wins in a row. They're starting to gel. They're starting to find themselves collectively as a unit. It's a pretty, ex it's not an experienced group, but it's an old group with four of the five starters being seniors. The Hall of Famer Bo Hunt joins us courtside. And Bo, last Friday night we talked about a battle of point guards. Well, we do have a good battle of point guards tonight, but we've also got a dandy battle of the big. Yeah, when you look at this game and you look at the bigs inside, a couple guys right around 6-7, I mean, they're going to be banging it on the board, and I think that's one of the keys tonight is who can get those second and third chance points by getting those offensive rebounds and who can defend the paint the best tonight. Northridge needs a win to stay in the Northern Lakes Conference race. Northwood wants one to stay on top of it. We'll tell you all about it with our St. Joseph County Police Department pregame show and our keys to win, and it's next on the 46th Game of the Week. This is the WHME TV 46 High School Basketball Game of the Week. Brought to you by Bills Heating, Health Markets, Tony Letcher, St. Joseph County Police Department, Tire Rack, Health Link, Raising Canes, Crown Trophy, API St. Andrews Products, Imagineering Finishing Technologies, and the IHS AA. And this edition of the 46 Game of the Week being brought to you in part by the St. Joseph County Police Department. Join the team and help protect and serve our community. Welcome back to Napanee as we get you ready for Northridge and number 10 Northwood in this NLC showdown. Time now to look at our keys to win. We'll start with the Northridge Raiders, led by their junior forward, Mason Bales. He is the leading scorer and rebounder on this team at 17 and a half points and seven rebounds a game, but he also leads them in assists and steals. No wonder he was an all Northern Lakes Conference selection a year ago, and he'll get help from Brady Scholl, the 6'6 sophomore. You saw him a little bit as a quarterback on the football team, having a nice year on the basketball court with 13 points and eight rebounds a game. The keys to win for the veteran Scott Radiker and the Raiders. They want to pass up good shots for great ones. Make that extra pass, it's your best friend. They have to communicate defensively, and they want to give no easy looks for Northwood. For Scott Radiker in his 23rd season overall, I'm bouncing back after last Friday's buzzer-beating loss to Warsaw. Well, I just liked our attention to detail most of the week, you know, bouncing back, you know, take the humility, you know, watching the film and saying, hey, you know, in a, in a one-point game, we, we talk about how the margin of error is really small, and uh, we were able to show them plays. For, we missed a block out in the end of the game, but we also showed them, hey, there's a play in the third quarter that could have cost you. Here's one in the second quarter. And, you know, our guys took it in really well, took it to heart, and, you know, we've had a pretty good week of practice. Anj mentioned the coaches' kids in the Northridge lineup. Well, it's a coach's kid that leads the way for the Northwood Panthers, and that's the senior point guard, Ethan Wolf. He has raised his scoring this year to 15 points a game, also having a tremendous year from three-point shooting-wise as well. 
hitting 44% from beyond the arc. And then when they need points inside, it's big Tyler Roche, 6'8 junior. He's averaging 16 points and nine rebounds a game. But my goodness, since Christmas, he has been on a roll, 22 points and 14 rebounds a contest. The keys to win for the state champion coach Aaron Wolf and the Panthers. Handle poise in an NLC game. Yeah, they're defending state champions, but four of your top six players didn't play much a year ago, so you gotta handle poise against Northridge. They gotta identify Northridge's personnel. Chuck mentioned the key players for Northridge. You gotta make sure those guys aren't able to blow you up. And defensive rebounding prevents Northridge from getting that second chance opportunity. Here's Ethan Wolf or Aaron Wolf on where his squad stands after losing four of their top six players from last year's state title team. Well, it's uh, it's a season that we knew that we were coming into. We had lost some players, and so obviously, uh, we're proud of our kids. Uh, they've been working hard. We've had great leadership, and we've got a, a great January schedule where we can tee it up and kind of evaluate where we're at. It was that noted basketball philosopher Rick Flair who said, "To be the man, you gotta beat the man," and the man is here in the pit. The Northwood Panthers, the defending 3A state champs, try to hold home court against Northridge in the NLC. This has been the St. Joseph County Police Department pregame show. Woo! The starting lineups and tip off are next on 46. Woo! And this edition of the TV 46 High School Basketball Game of the Week is being brought to you by Tire Rack. TireRack.com is the way tire buying should be. The colors were presented here at the Panther Pit. The color guard still on the floor, but we are getting ready for the introduction of the starting lineups here between Northridge and Northwood as they salute the American Legion Post who presented the colors here tonight at the Panther Pit. And now that they're leaving the floor, we'll go ahead and give you the starting lineups. Here's Angelo DiCarlo. All right, for Northridge, it is a all underclassmen starting lineup because they don't have a single senior on the team. Cam Radiker is a 5'10 junior guard, the coach's son, averaging 9.2 points per game. He's second on the team in assists. Dylan Springer, 5'10 junior guard, son of the girls basketball coach at Northridge. Three points per game, we'll hear from him at halftime. He's our 46 student athlete. Gideon Campbell, 5'11", junior guard, averaging 6.6 .6 points per game. He shoots 39% from beyond the arc. Mason Bales, a 6'2", junior forward, son of a coach, son of the current athletic director at Northridge, averaging 17.4 points, 7.1 rebounds, 3.2 assists, and one and a half steals per game. And Brady Scholl, 6'6", sophomore forward, the quarterback at fo on football, 12.8 points, 7.7 .7 rebounds, and 16 block shots. Now for the Northwood Panthers, as they'll hit the lights here at the Panther Pit. They'll start Ethan Wolf, the 5'11 senior, the son of the head coach, 15.4 points, 29 threes this year. He's also second on the team in assists and steals. Keegan Stats is a 5'11 senior guard, 5.9 points, team best, 27 assists. Owen Raider is a 5'11 5'11 senior forward, the quarterback from football team, 6.6 .6 points per game, team best 23 steals. Tyler Roche, a 6'8 junior forward, 16.3 points, 9.4 rebounds, 3.1 blocks per game. And Seth Russell, a 6'3 senior forward, ranked number one in the senior class at Northwood, 3.1 points and 4.7 rebounds per game. The series history between these two teams goes all the way back to 1969. Northridge leads the series by a count of 49 to 39. But a year ago, Northwood was able to win in Middlebury, a hard fought game, and they beat them by five, 51 to 46. Our officiating crew had to shuffle around for a Thursday night game, but Tony Bowman, Jeff Meeks, and Justin Shippey answered the call. We're glad you have, too. High school basketball is here on TV 46. And the opening tip brought to us by Williamsburg Furniture. It's controlled by the Northwood Panthers, who come in with a record of 8-3 overall, 2-0 in the Northern Lakes Conference. Their best wins over teams like Fort Wayne North and Fairfield. Their losses to Westview, Fort Wayne Concordia, and Indianapolis Tinley. 
Owen Raiders three-pointer finds the mark. And the Panthers get off to a good start behind Raider, who's been shooting the ball well as of late. 16th three of the season for Raider, but a lot of those threes have come since after Christmas as he's find that stride after coming off of football season. Against the 2-3 zone of Northwood, Northridge is 10-2 this year. They've beaten Lures and Riley for their best wins along with South Bend, Washington. Their losses came to Westview and to Warsaw by a point last Friday night in NLC play. Mason Bales, the leading scorer, throws it away. Raider with the steal. Here come the Panthers on the run. Keegan Stats for two. Owen Raider to Keegan Stats. We saw that a lot in football season as well. Five point. Northwood lead. Cam Radiker feeding Brady Scholl had it knocked away. And Northridge will retain possession. Scott Radiker was interested how his team would fare in a hostile environment here tonight. And they're getting tested early on here with the way Northwood has come out to play. And another steal by Raider. And Ethan Wolf, the point guard, will handle things up top for Northwood. Perhaps the inexperience of Northridge, at least in terms of age, showing early. Raider came into the night with a team leading 23 steals. Tyler Rush, forget about it. If he gets the ball like that on the low block, and it's 7-0. Northwood dead solid perfect in the first 90 seconds. Dylan Springer handles it up top for the Raiders. Mason Bales, now Radiker. There's Dylan Springer for three. Yes, sir. Three-pointer for Springer. That's his seventh of the year. Well, that was one of the keys to the game for Scott Radiker was make that extra pass, give up the good look for a better look, and they do that on that possession. Ethan Wolf up top with a moving screen called on Seth Russell, his first. And the first turnover by the Panthers. There you see Scott Radiker, the veteran coach, in his sixth season at Northridge, and then Aaron Wolf on the other side, 17 years here at the helm of the Northwood Panthers. 11 wins away from 300 for his career. Springer across the top of the key. Gideon Campbell trying to kick it back outside. Now Bales, and Raider draws that defensive assignment when he's over on that side. It's Bales, a deep three, well off the mark, and Rosh gets the rebound. They showed patience, but then Bales with a, probably not a shot you want to take there. He probably could have waited a little longer and tried to set up something else. Stats works with the left, crosses over, tried to go back door. It was kicked back outside. Wolf, shot fake, then a two-pointer. <laughs> And the Panthers hit four of their first five with four different scores, and Northridge with its third turnover already. And Scott Radiker wants timeout. Listen to the fans of the pit. 4.52 to go in the first. 9-3 Northwood on 46. And this edition of the 46 Game of the Week being brought to you by Raising Cane's Craveable Chicken Finger Meals, One Love. And a reminder, our first quarter being brought to us by Pizza Depot in Millersburg. And look at this replay of from, brought to you by Springer Dental Care, Ethan Wolf. He's really developed into the shooter on this team. Last year, the distributor, you know, Aaron Wolf said, hey, we have got two starters back, but everyone's in a new role. Ethan has taken on more of a shooter mentality, and his shooting percentage has been excellent beyond the three, and there was a deep two. Rosh outside to Owen Raider. Raider couldn't get any room against Bales. Now Rosh driving on Scholl. Scholl defended it well. Radiker with the rebound. And at the other end, it's Bales spinning and blocked by Russell, but a foul. His second. Take a look at this replay brought to you by Springer Dental Care. Northridge got the ball quickly up the court. Had a good look, Russell comes from behind and creates the foul. Meanwhile, Mason Bales goes to the foul line for Northridge. He's an 80% free throw shooter. The son of the athletic director gets the first to dance in. Williamsburg Furniture, manufacturer of quality custom furniture and proud supporters of high school athletics and dedicated student athletes. 
Russell checks out, and Mason Pearson checks in. Boy, Bale's got a lot of iron on those two, but they wound up dropping and bring the lead down to four. Wolf off the pick and roll. Stats outside. Raider nearly lost the handle, but is able to get it back. They're trying to set Pearson up on the low block as he goes to work against Hayden Johnson, the big redhead. Now here's Rosh over Scholl. Rattles out. Raider with a one-hand rebound, but it's in a wild shot, and Scholl gets the carry. Good look there by Tyler, just couldn't get it to go. He's got more range. He's got pretty good range for a big guy. Saw him uh, hit some threes consecutive yesterday in practice. And how about Owen Raider, another steal. And Keegan stats for two. Keegan 11-5, Northwood. Three early steals for Owen Raider. And four early turnovers for Northridge. This is Hayden Johnson, their super sub, a six-foot sophomore who's averaging eight and a half points a game. Scott Radiker liking the contribution he gives them off the bench. He's not liking the turnover factory being open early on here for the Raiders. And Owen Raider goes crashing into Dylan Springer, who's called for the foul. Whether you're hungry for specialty pizza, wings, breadsticks, subs, or ice cream, Pizza Depot in Millersburg can feed the family uh, or your whole team. The Pizza Depot is excited to announce their second location coming soon to Middlebury. A big thank you to Pizza Depot in Millersburg for feeding the production crew prior to the game. Lob pass comes inbounds, and Rosh has to flag it down. Ethan Wolf working on Cam Radiker, battle of coaches' kids there. It's a switching man-to-man -man defense here for Northridge. And Pearson got loose for two. So big Mason Pearson, a 6'6 sophomore, gets a rare basket. At the other end, it's Bales for three. Snap it. He has five. The interesting thing is Northridge has not missed a shot yet. They're two of two, both three-pointers. They haven't taken a two because they've had five turnovers. Rosh down low, money time. I mean, can you tell that Owen Raider was a quarterback on the team that went to the state finals, the way he's distributing the ball right now? Johnson missed the three, but here's the rebound as you get another look at the slam from Springer Dental Care. Just a great pass by Raider finding him, and Tyler just sending it home. Keegan Stats checks back in to give Owen Raider a breather. And Grant Miller, a 5'11 sophomore, who wears number five, comes in the game for Northwood. It's Scholl outside to Johnson for three. Ring it up. Hayden Johnson buries the three-pointer. And Northridge shooting very well beyond the arc, and that's keeping him in this game, only down four. Just got to clean things up in terms of distributing the ball and handling the, the basketball. Whoa. Now Miller for three. Miller time. He was just one of eight from three-point range before that shot, but he stepped into it with confidence and another Northridge turnover. Stats with numbers is blocked by Bales. As in blocking foul. Yoder Stutzman Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning has been serving Napanee and the surrounding area since 1969. They're committed to what they do and are here to serve you for your plumbing, heating, and cooling needs. Yoder Stutzman Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning, building lasting solutions. Miller will check out. Stats comes back in. It's Pearson on the inbounds pass. There's Rosh, and he travels. Yep. Northwood fans thought there was some pushing going on from Scholl, but Ross shuffled the feet. This game's health tip is brought to you by Health Link. Everyone knows you can't play or learn if you don't feel your best. If your child isn't feeling well, schedule a visit at Health Link. Health Link offers medical, dental, vision, and more. 18-11, Northwood still over a minute to go here in the first. Bales, great pass to Scholl for two. 
There's the unselfishness that Scott Radiker's been talking about with his basketball team and the great chemistry that they have. Nice cut by Raider, but he has to take it back outside. Both these teams work so well together. Now Rosh working one on one against Scholl. The help defense was a little late, but Scholl defended it well enough. Pearson, though, with an offensive rebound. Now an opportunity perhaps to play for the final shot of the quarter for Northwood. Yeah, I think that's what Aaron Wolf wants here. Raider had to come out and help Ethan Wolf. You see the clock, right hand corner of the tireact.com scoreboard. Wolf, a deep three. Offline. Does Northridge have a chance? Pearson knocked it away, and it goes out of bounds off Northridge. Northwood will have half a second. Let's see if they try to run a lob to Rosh or Pearson here. It's Rosh trying to go the back door. Panthers not going to go. And the first quarter has come to an end. An exciting first quarter of action as Northwood got off to a 7-0 start thanks to Owen Raider and some sharpshooting. But Dylan Springer and three-pointers kept Northridge in it. Tyler Rosh with the jam. And it's 18-13 Wood after one on 46. And this edition of the 46th Game of the Week being brought to you in part by Bill's Heating, keeping families and businesses comfortable since 1951. We toss it downstairs for Bill's Heating courtside report. Bo Hunt, your thoughts on the first quarter? Yeah, I think one of the biggest things for Northridge was you saw the nerves early with those turnovers and the aggressiveness with Northwood, but they settled down, really got back in this game by the three, and I think Northwood's ability to really spread the ball and have some guys rather than their star guys score is really key to this game tonight too, guys. There are some amazing stats from the first quarter. The one that stands out to me, Ange, Northwood took 15 shots compared to five for Northridge. Wow, 15 to five in shots, and yet Northridge is only down five as we start the second quarter being brought to us by Lori Sumter with Phil Hahn and Associates. Well, how about this? Six different players scored for Northwood in the first quarter. That's unbelievable. Four, meanwhile, scored for Northwood. Scholl misses inside for the Raiders, and Northwood with a chance to get the lead back up to seven, which is as big as it's been tonight. Here's Rosh, lost it off his foot. Good hustle. And Northridge finally does force the turnover as Scholl uses those long arms to pill for the pass at the other end. Johnson is fouled by Ethan Wolf. Well, and the turnovers were the biggest number perhaps in that first quarter as it was six to one. And then now Northridge forcing one there as you take another look at the Sprinter Springer Dental Care replay on the foul here that'll lead to some shots. Hayden Johnson, an 82% free throw shooter. Primarily a JV player last year, but had a career high 17 in their win over Laporte to win the Laporte Holiday Tournament. And there you see Ian Rosh watching his little brother Tyler. Ian here with a, some of his teammates from Grace College, and we'll see them Saturday on TV 46. Grace ranked number one in NAIA play, taking on the Bethel Pilots. We'll have that one for you Saturday night at 9. Hayden Johnson now four early points for Northridge off the bench. And another ball knocked away. Pearson trying to chase it down. It goes out of bounds off Pearson, and it'll be Northridge ball. Well, and just like that, now the turnover battle is starting to even out. Six for Northridge, four now for Northwood. James Cranston with some good hustle on defense that time to force the miscue. Gideon Campbell handles it up top. Some of these names for Northridge may sound familiar to longtime viewers. After all, there's a Campbell and a Bales, just like there were a couple of years ago. In fact, Ethan Wolf saying before the game, I'm used to playing against Nolan Bales and Malachi <laughs> Campbell, not Mason Bales and Gideon Campbell. Ball knocked away, wow. and Northwood has another steal. Stats races the distance and is fouled on the way up. I think they're going to call it on Scholl. 
take, take a another look, at the, look on the Sprinter Dental Care replay. This is a fantastic steal. Stats knocks it out. And then Rosh able to get it back to Stats and go the length of the floor, and then they get the foul. They did foul, call the foul on Shaw. Keegan Stats with the Beard Majestic misses the first. He is a 71% free throw shooter on the year and the team's leader in assists. Middlebury Community Schools is hiring. Visit their website for more information about their current openings. Stats looking for his fifth point of the night. Gets it right there and he leads the Panthers in scoring tonight. That was the first point of the second quarter for Northwood, who led 18-13 after one, so one point each here in the second quarter. Scholl inside. Campbell thought about pulling the trigger. That's Johnson. And now there's the shot that they probably wanted as they get it down low to Scholl, and it's blocked by Ross and knocked out of bounds. It'll go to Northwood. Well, and Rosh doing such an excellent job inside, averaging over three blocks per game. We saw that in semi-state in the state finals last year, how dominating he can be inside. Here comes Ethan Wolf for the Panthers. As Anj mentioned, more of a shooter this year, but still clearly running things from the point for this team. But it's Wolf for the three right there. That one's short, and Johnson collects the loose change for Northridge. Northwood now two of five from three-point range. Radiker has been quiet in the early going here for Northridge. He normally averages nine points a game. He hasn't scored, and I'm not really sure how many, if he's even really had a shot. Hasn't had a shot that I can remember and has not had quite that many touches. He's getting some in this sequence. Good defense here by Northwood. Now here's Bales trying to penetrate, and he took it right at Pearson, and Bales lays it in. He has seven. And all of a sudden, it's back to a three-point game. So Northridge showing some of that grit that Scott Radiker has talked about with this team. Northridge adopting an African word used by Doc Rivers called Ubuntu, which means that I am because we are, and it talks about the unselfishness of this team. They really worked together well as a team that showed in defense that time with all the help they were able to give to create the turnover. Well, and, and again, they're all underclassmen, but in a way, when you have four of your five starters all in the same class, all juniors, that really helps chemistry because these guys have been playing together forever. And frankly, that's been an AAU team for a long time. So Seth Russell checking back in for Northwood, but here's Springer for the tie. Wouldn't go, and Raider gets a key rebound for Northwood. The offensive pace of this one has slowed dramatically here in the second quarter. Rosh getting a much needed touch. Raider couldn't get the trigger pulled. Now Rosh trying to set up a one-on-one, -on -one, but it's Raider topside triple finds a home. Raider with his second three of the night. His 17th of the season, and he doubles the lead for Northwood. He's got six, and Northwood is up by six with four minutes to play in the first half. Stats nearly had another steal. Instead, Campbell's shot is blocked by Ross. Holy cow. That's Tyler's second block of the night. Stats with aggressiveness, and he's fouled on the way up by Radiker. Take a look at the block, the replay brought to you by Springer Dental Care. <laughs> he gets a lot of the blocks on the inside, but there, in the corner. Well, the replay from Springer Dental Care, and if Campbell takes too many shots like that, he'll be checking the chiclets because that one nearly got knocked back into the teeth. <laughs> Stats inbound. Rosh using those long arms to corral the pass, and then Wolf for three. Hello. Ethan Wolf with three back to back bombs, and Northwood has its biggest lead at nine. And another block by Rosh on a three. Springer tries to take it inside. Needs help. 
And a foul called against North Warwick. Ben Soft Pretzels has been sporting high school athletics since 2008. They believe that sports are an important part of a well-rounded education, and we're proud to support the next generation of athletes. Find Ben Soft Pretzel at the University Park Mall, or at most major Notre Dame athletic events, have a pretzel day. As you can see that replay brought to you by Springer Dental Care and another block, the third of the game for Tyler Roth. She has 37 block shots for the season now. He's averaging over three a game. Hayden Johnson. And Northridge trying to get its spacing down right now. Radiker leaves it off, and another shot blocked by Ross. He's been incredible. Raider outside the stats, and Northwood will reset it with a nine point lead. The defense of Northwood really stymieing Northridge, and Raider has been hot, but couldn't get that one to drop. At the other end, Bales is fouled by Stats and gets the bucket of the bump. They needed that one after the 6-0 run by Northwood, extended lead from three to nine. As you take a look at the replay, brought to you by Springer Dental Care. Gets in, gets the hoop and the harm, and he go to the line to try to finish the three-point play. And the free throw by Bales rolls in. Mason with 10 in the early going here. And Northridge chisels back to within six. It's been entertaining here on the pit. Russell has it go through his hands. That didn't happen much during football season, I'll tell you <laughs> that. Had a great game in that semi state to help his team get to the state finals. Now Aaron Wolf wants to take a timeout. We'll take it as well. 2.12 to go in the first half. Northwood leads at 25 19. You're watching high school basketball on 46. This edition of the 46 game of the week being brought to you by Imagineering Finishing Technologies, IFT, where quality is a way of life. And the way of life for us for a long time has been covering Bethel College basketball on TV 46. And what a dandy we have for you Saturday. Grace is undefeated, ranked number one, and coming in for the latest chapter of this long Crossroads League rivalry to take on Drew Lutz and the Bethel Pilots. We'll see if Ian Roche is having fun on Saturday at the Y Camp Center as he goes up against his former teammate Trent Edwards and Bethel. The great part about seeing these NIA games is seeing some of the stars from the high school days from Michiana playing. You're gonna get a lot of selection of great players, of course, from throughout Indiana and the surrounding states, but there's so much good talent from our area that are playing on both of these teams. It's great to see, and it should be a good one coming up in Mishawaka. And I don't want to forget about Carter Stoltz for us from Northridge as well, who plays for Grace College. And that's just the two teams here. You got Preston Phillips from Jimtown and Clay Hilliard from Plymouth. The list goes on and on. Two minutes to go, first half. Northridge down six, but with the basketball. Springer thought about the open look and then saw Tyler Rosh closing and said, no, that's a bad idea. <laughs> And Rosh has really been able to neutralize the three-point shooting of Northridge by moving out to the wing and then helping down for Seth, Seth Russell to give him some help against Scholl. But at the other side, Hayden Johnson is able to hit the three, his second of the night. So Northridge solves the puzzle a little bit and gets it down to a three-point game. When they can get the shots off, they're going in. The problem is, can they get them off, whether it's being Rosh with the blocks or the turnovers early in that first quarter? Dylan Springer with a kick that would, would have made Dylan Ritchie at Northridge envious with that well, little effort. Well, Dylan Springer, a very good soccer player, captain on the soccer team, so looking Sur good, showing those skills there. Surprised he didn't try to header it. As you see the <laughs> view from atop the Panther pit, the steal by Mason Bales, and the stop. Bales having himself a great game already, 12 points, and look at that, Northridge within one as their fans come to the feet. The green and gold clads now have something to cheer about. Wolf tries to silence them, can't do it. Show with the rebound, Northridge could take the lead. Radiker misses and Russell gets the carry. It's an 8-0 Raiders run here, late in the first half. Let's see how Aaron Wolf 
decides to have his team play this one. Do they try to hold for one shot or to just run the offense? And another kick out of bounds by Hayden Johnson. Aaron Wolf watching his team bring it across against the trap. Stats had to flag that one down. Russell down low to Rosh, and he'll lay it up for two. Good hands by Tyler Rosh. You just got to get it within the vicinity of him, and he's going to grab it and put it in. Let's see if Northridge can get the tie. You see the clock right-hand corner of your screen. They've got it in the hands of Bales. Top side triple is off the mark. Raider the rebound, and the first half has come to an end with Northwood leading Northridge by a count of 27 to 24. And as the two teams leave the court, we go downstairs to Bo Hunt. He's going to grab Scott Radiker for a Bills heating sideline report after Scott Radiker gets done talking to the officials. Going in, going into halftime, only down by three. You guys were down by seven early, down by nine, but your guys persevered and really gritted it out. Just your thoughts on your guys' play. Yeah, we're not moving the basketball against the zone. We're too stationary. We're not, you know, the things we worked on aren't showing right now and uh, on offense. Defensively, we're getting caught flat-footed at times. We're not negotiating the screens the way we worked on this week. So we got to get back to the things, to the game plan. That's as simple as that. Scott, thanks for your time. Thank you. Never know, Northridge was only down by three thanks to a big first half from Mason Bales. He had 12, but Northwood leads at 27-24. Tony Letcher, Health Market Student Athletes are next on 46. Time now for our 46 Student Athletes of the Week presented by Tony Letcher with Health Markets. We have Northwood senior Ethan Wolf along with Northridge junior Dylan Springer here, both sons of coaches, and we're excited to have them as our 46 Student Athletes of the Week. We'll start with Dylan, a junior in Northridge, captain of the soccer team, a member of the basketball team, a 3.97 GPA. How do you make it all work? Uh, I just feel like my time management is really a big part of that. So I just get my work done early so I have time to study and then focus on basketball and soccer. I mentioned being the son of a, a coach, your dad the, the head coach for the girls team, but being the son of a coach, how has that helped you grow as both a player and a person? Well, as a player, uh, you know, just being able to have the keys to get in the gym whenever I want, and then growing up with them, I've always had that, that basketball talk in my household, so just talking about different things with them really helped me see the game in a better way. And how has Northridge helped you get to where you are today? Just the support and the chemistry that I've built with everybody on my team and all the students that I go to school with, you know, it's just really supportive, so I feel like that's helped me a lot. Dylan, thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Ethan Wolf, a senior here for Northwood, has a 3.99 GPA and is a part of Business Professionals of America. How do you make it all work? I just try to manage my time wisely and get as much schoolwork done uh, at school so I don't have as much homework. All right, well, Dylan's dad is the girls' coach. Your dad is your coach. What's that like, uh, especially you know a year ago, winning a state championship together? What was that experience like? Oh, it was a joy. I've had a lot of fun growing up as a coach's kids. There's definitely some cons to it, like pressure, but I wouldn't trade it for anything. And then being a Northwood Panther, what does that mean to you, especially since you got that family blood, your mom being a Northwood grad as well? Uh, it means a lot. I've grown up here my whole life. My mom's from here, so this community's just treated us uh, very well, and it, I just love being here. Ethan, thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Nice job there, Dylan. Congratulations again. Dylan Springer from Northridge, Ethan Wolf from Northwood, our 46 Student Athletes of the Week, presented by Tony Letcher of Health Markets. We're back with first half stats and highlights right after this. You're watching the TV 46 Game of the Week. This edition of the 46 Game of the Week being brought to you in part by the Indiana High School Athletic Association, keeping education in front of athletics. 27-24 in favor of number 10 Northwood here at the half at the Panther Pit. Chuck Freeby and Angelo DiCarlo high above the fray. Very entertaining first half. And while there's been some nice offense, particularly from three-point range, 
I think both teams have played some pretty good defense. Yeah, led by Tyler Rosh, who's got four block shots in the first half alone. He's been outstanding to go along with six points. Northwood has done a great job capitalizing off points, off turnovers, but Northridge was able to start doing that a little bit in the second quarter as well, and that's why we have a three-point game. Well, let's show you how it got to be this way here in Napanee tonight. Owen Raider got things started off with a three-point shot for Northwood. They jumped out to a 7-0 lead before Dylan Springer was able to answer with his only three points of the first half to get Northridge's offensing sync. Tyler Rosh had a big first half, the four block shots, the six points, the dunk right there, but Mason Bales was the big gun out on the floor for both teams, and big guns is what was firing. Grant Miller from outside buries that one. Inside, Brady Scholl, but that was his only basket of the first half. He averages 13 a game. Ethan Wolf had long distance dialed up on that shot. But Northridge got back in it with an 8-0 run late in the half. Hayden Johnson with a key three. And then Mason Bales with the steal and the score to get the Raiders back within three at the break. And the big difference so far, just the number of shots that have been taken by the two teams favoring Northwood, one of the reasons they're winning. Yeah, and, but it's pretty even otherwise. Three pointers, Northwood four of nine, Northridge four of 10. And the biggest stat in my opinion, seven turnovers apiece, because that was six to one. Northridge had six turnovers in the first quarter, and then Northwood had six turnovers in the second quarter. So that changed, and here's the other thing you gotta remember for Northridge. They are actually shooting the ball really well when they can get the shot off, but that's a big problem in the in front of the tree that is Tyler Roche because he is trying to prevent them from doing that with those forward block shots. Northwood has won two in a row against their county rivals. Can they get the hat trick? They'll have to hang on to a three-point lead. We'll hear the thoughts of Aaron Wolf when we come back. This has been the St. Joe County Police Department Halftime Show. Third quarter play-by-play -play from Napanee is next on 46. And this edition of the 46th Game of the Week is being brought to you by HelpLink, your community health center. Looking for your dream home? Embrace the pace in Napanee's newest neighborhood development, Wellfield Community. The multi-generational development by R. Yoder Construction offers villa options along with single family and estate home properties all designed to suit your unique taste and lifestyle. Construction and home sales have begun and you can start your journey at wellfieldcommunity.com. Bo Honda, I saw you talking to Aaron Wolf during the break. What did the Northwood coach have to say in this Bill's heating sideline report? Yeah, I got a chance to talk to Aaron, and he said we straight up just need to tee it up. He goes, we need to be a little bit more physical out there. He goes, I like the way we played in the first half, but we can definitely be more physical and get after it, guys. All right, thank you very much, Bo. Majestic Security is proud to support the student athletes of Northridge High School. Good luck to the Raiders. Whether you're in need of a professional security officer for your business, home or event, loss prevention program or night deposit escorts, Majestic Security provides the highest level of security to their clients and communities. Veteran owned, honest and professional, Majestic Security, MajesticSecurity.com. And a reminder, more high school basketball coming your way next Friday night. We'll be in the Northeast Corner Conference, Westview and Fairfield. They're actually playing Thursday night as we tape this in the semifinals of the Northeast Corner Conference Tournament. Just eight days later, they'll play again at Fairfield, and we'll be there for you Friday night, 11, Saturday morning at 9. Northwood with a three-point lead. Third quarter being brought to us by our friends at Southwind Flooring. Tyler Rosh, oh, the head and shoulder fake of the finger roll. George Gervin couldn't have done it better. Eight points now for Tyler. Meanwhile, Gideon Campbell outside to Dylan Springer. Too strong. Here's Keegan Stats coming the other way. Northwood had that strong start, and they have never trailed in this game, leading 7-0 at the beginning. Bales tried to get another steal there, but stepped on the end line and ran into Panther Phil Lechleitner over on the Northwood bench. Panther Phil can take a shot like that. He's been in the beef barn, kicked by cows. Imagineering Finishing Technologies in South Bend is globally known as the knowledge source for metal finishing solutions. Like the teams in this game, Imagineering is always working towards a great finish. Thank you, Imagineering, for your support of High School Sports on 46. Double turnover there, and Stats to Rosh. Oh, Stats had to do a ballet act, and then Rosh underneath had it stripped by Radiker, but a foul called on Cam Radiker. 
And he'll send Tyler Roche, only a 56% foul shooter to the line. That's a wild little sequence there between the two teams as they each trade their eighth turnover. We like to let you know if you're, it's time for new tires, it probably is at this point in the year. Go to TireRack.com and try their easy to use tire decision guide to get a personalized tire recommendation. They sell only the best brands backed by test results, consumer ratings, and customer reviews. TireRack.com, the way tire buying should be. If it isn't time for new tires tonight, it probably will be tomorrow. Seven point Northwood lead. Rosh now with 10 to lead the Panthers. Mason Bales kicked away by Owen Raider. These two teams meeting every year since 1969. Many times they met twice, and a few times they met thrice during the season. So they're well familiar with each other over the last 54 years. Stats got his foot on that one. In fact, 1969 kind of reminds me to ask our Ben's Pretzel trivia question. And we want to know who were the original head basketball coaches at Northridge and Northwood. Think about it. We'll give you the answer in a little bit. Bales for three. Yes, sir. Mason with his second three of the night, his 15th point. And Northridge isn't going back to Middlebury quite yet. Fourth three-pointer for the Raiders here this evening. Rosh with a spin move on Scholl and a reverse layup that wouldn't go in. And Russell got undercut by Gideon Gamble. Take a look at the replay brought to you by Springer Dental Care. Nice move inside, reverse land, just won't go, and then you see the undercut there for the foul. Wolf garners the inbounds pass. Owen Raider, easy to find with those bright orange shoes, and Russell's shoes kick the pass away. St. Joseph County Police Department is here to protect and serve our community, and they're looking for more people to join their team. Employment opportunities for high school graduates are available and they offer outstanding benefits and a true family environment on their team. Learn more at sjcindiana.com slash employment. Bales drives the baseline, tried to stuff on Rosh, he missed it, but Scholl is there for the putback. Oh, base, Mason Bales was looking for big time highlights right there, but he was lucky his teammate had his back. That gets them within two now. Wolf on the back door, and it's open for two. Good ball movement by the Panthers. Raiders trying to answer quickly with Gideon Campbell double team. Great job by Campbell, able to get rid of that ball while he was double teamed on the sideline there. Radiker, the hesitation dribble, and he lost it out of bounds as we answer our Ben Saw Pretzel trivia question. The original head basketball coaches at Northridge and Northwood. You'd have to be an old timer like me to remember this one. Irv Pratt over at Northridge and Dick Campbell here at Northwood. Irv lasted a long time over at Northridge, won their first sectional for them in 1977. I'm Just on passed John, away not too long ago. I'm on John Harold's site a lot and I wasn't <laughs> able to get that one. <laughs> Here's Keegan Stats down the lane for the mid-range jumper that rolls in. He's had a nice night with seven points. That's above his average of six. He scored in every quarter. As Hayden Johnson goes down the lane, got the bucket on the bump. And Johnson now has nine. Take a look at the replay brought to you by Springer Dental Care. Johnson getting inside, gets the harm, and then finishing it off to get the hoop. And now trying to complete the three-point play. The redhead looking to go into double figures, but couldn't get that one to roll in as Rosh gets the rebound. Rosh, oh, he thought about pulling the trigger. Instead, going to work on Scholl. He's two for two from three this year, by the way. He can do it. He does have range. I saw it in practice yesterday. Wolf getting a screen from Seth Russell, trying to go around Gideon Campbell. Good defense by Campbell that time. Midway through quarter number three. 
Stats going down the lane, and it's knocked out of bounds by Scholl. Northwood retains possession up four. Williamsburg Furniture, manufacturer of quality custom furniture and proud supporters of high school athletics and the dedicated student athletes. Keegan Stats, not a three-point shooter, so they cover him up well. Raider down low to Rosh. He's got one-on-one -on -one with Scholl. Trying to win against the big man, but Scholl defended it beautifully. And then another undercut foul on Northridge, this one on Hayden Johnson. Whether you're hungry for specialty pizza, wings, breadsticks, subs, or ice cream, Pizza Depot in Millersburg can feed the family or your whole team. The Pizza Depot is excited to announce their second location coming soon to Middlebury. A big thank you to Pizza Depot in Millersburg for feeding the crew prior to tonight's game. It's a very enjoyable pizza. Wow, a lot of kicks in this game. Springer once again showing he's a member of the soccer team with that one. And they say, they say specialty pizza, and they're not kidding. They got a hamburger pizza that you get very confused when you're eating it. You're like, I'm eating a pizza, but it, it tastes like a hamburger. It throws you off a little bit. That's cool. Inbounds pass. Northwood lobs it up for Rosh, and he'll lay it in for two more. Tyler with 12. Six here in the third alone. Tyler, of course, had a huge state championship game for Northwood. 14 points and 13 rebounds in that effort. Here's Scholl. As they work it along the baseline. Springer into the lane with the right hand for two. Dylan with five now. The son of the girls basketball coach at Northridge. And boy, the Raiders girls having a great year. 18 and two. And we could see them in the girls sectional coming up here in a couple of weeks. And Northridge will get to host. Here's a three on the way from Raider. And splashes in his third of the night. He's had a triple in every quarter. And the lead back up to seven for the Panthers. But a great pass from Bales to Scholl for two. And Brady now with six. And you see why Mason Bales leads the team in assists. And that was an excellent job by Scholl going off the high glass to prevent it from being blocked. Russell flanks this one down. Rosh down low against Scholl, just bullies him to the basket but couldn't score, and Scholl gets the loose change. Raiders want to run, but they throw it away. Yoder Stutzman Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning has been serving Napanee and the surrounding area since 1969. They're committed to what they do and are here to serve you for your plumbing, heating, and cooling needs. Yoder Stutzman Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning, building lasting solutions. Both teams go into the bench. Mason Pearson takes the place of Ian Rosh, and so Gideon Campbell will take the place of Brady Scholl as Scott Radiker says, well, they're going to take out their big man. I can give mine a little bit of a break. Well, and with Rosh out, this is an opportunity now for Northridge. You, 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 well, maybe not. <laughs> there was the opportunity. <laughs> I mean, wow. What is it? Just get a spritz of water and go back in there, Tyler. Did, did you catch your breath? Okay, bye. <laughs> and that guess what? Shoal comes back in. Oh, well, yeah. Taking the place of James Cranston. So the chess match is on here in Napanee. And Brady said, oh, I'm not. Uh, it, I'm, you're going back in anyway. We need you. Ethan Wolf needs some help. As he works against Campbell. He's defending him well. Rosh for three. Short. And here's Scholl with the rebound. Raiders on the run. Bales kicks it back out to Johnson for three. Too strong. And Rosh got a big rebound there. That was a great look, though. They found the trailer and almost got the shot. He was open and just couldn't go down. Great hustle there by Hayden Johnson trying to force a turnover. This take game, a look at Aaron Wolf. This game's health tip is brought to you by Health Link. Everyone knows you can't play or learn if you don't feel your best. If your child isn't feeling well, schedule a sick visit at Health Link. Health Link offers medical, dental, vision, and more. Five point Northwood lead. 95 seconds to go in the third. Wolf, nice hesitation move. Oh, oh, on the block. He was fouled by Radiker. And Ethan trying to go into double digits with a trip to the line here. Take a look at the replay brought to you by Springer Dental Care. This is not an easy shot, let alone when you get fouled and he drains it. 
Beautiful play there by Ethan Wolf. And now Wolf going to the line where he is only a 90% free throw <laughs> shooter. Also a very good student, as we mentioned at halftime, our Tony Letcher Health Market student athlete, participated in the Business Professional Association Nationals over in Dallas, Texas. Scholl got the handle back on the loose ball. Radiker drives hard to the hole and then finds an open Campbell who misses the three. Look how high Rosh got for the rebound. That shot didn't go, but that was as good of a setup of a play as we've seen all night by either team. And Wolf rattled that one out, but Pearson the rebound and he draws the foul from Bales. Middlebury Community School is a top achieving school district inspiring students to change the world. Mason Pearson, 6'6 sophomore, is a 50% free throw shooter. Started a couple of games when Seth Russell was banged up at the beginning of the year. Only averaging .3 points a game, but he now has three points tonight. And I'll, I'll wait to make this one comment until after the free throw. That doesn't count, it's still a jinx. Northwood has been a very good free throw shooting team tonight. <laughs> you can't, <laughs> it's still cow. That was worse, I think, actually. <laughs> It's like the sword of Damocles was over his head. Uh, Hayden Johnson drives in. Scholl couldn't get the pass. More good defense from Northwood. Panthers with their biggest lead of the night at nine, trying to extend it here in the final 30 seconds of the fourth. And Aaron Wolf says, eh, let's put the brakes on, boys. Ben Soft Pretzels has been sporting high school athletics since 2008. They believe that sports are an important part of a well-rounded education and are proud to support the next generation of athletes. Have a pretzel day. Final 10 seconds of period number three. Ethan Wolf to Keegan Stats. They tried to feed Pearson down low. Scholl from half court was short. And the third quarter comes to an end. The Northwood Panthers try to win five in a row. Northridge came in with Mason Bales hitting threes, but Owen Raider and Tyler Rosh had some answers in the third quarter. And Northwood leads it by nine. Let's all go to the fourth on 46. And this edition of the 46 Game of the Week being brought to you in part by Ben Soft Pretzel, serving our community one pretzel at a time. Let's go downstairs for a Bills heating courtside report. Bo Hunt, your thoughts on that third quarter? Well, I think I really like what Northwood did with the guys that aren't necessarily the star players. They had some guys that really came out and really balled out, I think. You know, Ross is going to be that effective guy inside that really eliminating any any inside shots and eliminating some of the three-pointers, but Raider with the big three, I think was one of the biggest things in that. And I really like Pearson on the inside coming off the bench. I think Mason's one of those guys that's unsung hero that gets in there, does some dirty work, and really takes the lane away and takes anything inside away from Northridge. To elaborate on Bo's point, Northwood has 44 points. Their quote-unquote stars, Wolf and Rosh, have 22. Four other players have combined for 22. So they're getting plenty of contributions tonight from the supporting roles. Keegan Stats has done a nice job defensively, for instance, and he also has seven points. Radiker has to kick it outside to Springer. Now Bales for three. He's got such a pure shot. That's 18 now for Mason Bales, just above his average. They needed that one because they just did not shoot the ball very well in that third quarter. Their offense is working the ball around really well to get good looks. They just couldn't get them to drop in the third quarter. So that's going to help them here early in the fourth to find that shot. They trailed but Warsaw by 10 the other night in the second half and came back to have the lead in that one late. And they're trying to get back in this one with Campbell hammered by Owen Raider. Gideon Campbell, an 83% free throw shooter, will hit the line. Here's a replay brought to you by Springer Dental Care, and no question about that one, as plenty of contact in the play since Campbell to the line, an opportunity to get this down to four points here if he can make both free throws. Gideon, the 5'11 junior, with his first point of the night, 
And the mark of 54 is so important for this Northridge team. They are 9-0 when they can score 54 or more. They'll have to put the foot to the pedal a little bit to get there here in the fourth quarter. Campbell misses a free throw, but Scholl is there for the putback. He has eight. And we're back to a three-point game. Well, you say that, Chuck, but if they don't get to 54, it feels like that, they won't win. Yeah, it, it really doesn't. So it's, it's, a, it's a great stat that you found there. Here's Wolf outside. He's guarded by Mason Bay. Keegan Staffs, now Seth Russell. Scholl defending Rosh pretty well, but he fouled him that time. <laughs> that was a battle of big boys in the paint right there. Lots of contact inside. Take a look at it one more time on the Springer Dental Care replay. Going toe to toe. Scholl putting on the body and then got called for the foul. Well, Bo, you talked about this battle of the big men in the pregame, what are your thoughts on the battle between Wash and Scholl tonight? Well, I think one of the biggest things that stands out is Scholl's only a sophomore, and they talked about is he going to be physical enough? Is he going to be able to go up against a guy that's a little bit bigger than him and a lot more experience on the varsity level? But I think Scholl's done a great job on the inside really matching up, but Tyler Rosh's effectiveness of altering three-point shots and the blocks that he's had all night has just been amazing, guys. 13 points and four block shots, but Cam Radiker got that one off. And Rosh, another rebound. He might be working on another double-double here tonight. I'm keeping track of the blocks. Probably should have kept track of the rebounds, <laughs> too, for him. Because he's definitely getting a bunch of them. And there's Rosh on the outside, trying to take shoulder school again, but lost the handle. Raider, ooh, ooh, had to do all he could to keep that foot down. And then a turnaround jumper with that might have drawn rain or snow. Owen Raider with 11. Had a triple in each of the first three quarters and then as beautiful of a mid-range jumper as you're going to get right there. Campbell tries to answer the bottom of the Three and the foul. Take another look on the Springer Dental Care replay. Gideon Campbell's 17th three-pointer of the year, and he got it with Owen Raider clipping the leg. And that will be an opportunity now for a four-point play. The Raiders trailed by nine at the beginning of the fourth quarter. They can cut it to two right here. All five of Campbell's points here in the final stanza. Two-point game in the pit. Five and a half to go. Glad That's you joined us for this one on 46. Ooh. And a travel called on Northwood. Northridge can tie or take the lead for the first time tonight. And one of the reasons they've been able to get back in it has been the change in the turnover battle. That's 13 now on Northwood. Northridge, who had six in the first quarter, only have 10 turnovers. Mason Bales checks back in. James Cranston checks out. Surprised neither of these coaches have called the timeout yet. I'm sure we'll get plenty down the stretch. Campbell working his way in. Here's Springer. Now Bale. Northridge having to show some patience against this Northwood zone defense. Scholl got a handle on it and put it up and in. He's got 10. We're tied at 47. That was a great job by Scholl to stick with it with Russell all over the ball. Russell wanted a held ball to be called, didn't get it. And Scholl able to get the bucket to tie it up at 47. The visitors from Middlebury on their feet. Raider has hit some key shots. They go to Russell, back to Raider for two. Owen with 13 tonight. He's tied for the team lead in scoring. Scholl at the other end over Rush. And it's starting to heat up. 49 all. And Northridge looking for that 54 mark. I think they'll get there. Yeah. Scholl suddenly with 12 points. Stats had it knocked away, and Raider had to collect it. Three on two advantage for a brief moment for Northwood, and then Ethan Wolf pulls it out 
to reset. Gets a screen from Russell, but Campbell switched well. There's Wash, though, got away from Shaw. Aaron Wolf fired up. He wanted a timeout after that basket, couldn't get it. Instead, Campbell drives baseline and finds Scholl over Wash. Missed twice, and Russell gets the rebound. Aaron Wolf holds up five fingers over on the Northwood sideline. 3.35 to go here in the fourth. Northwood by two. Grader lost the handle, but there was Keegan Stats. And Stats goes in and got another open home. They love it in the Northwood student body. Stats now with nine, and he'll go to the line. 71% foul shooter on the year. Great, great effort there in the Springer Dental Care replay, and he has now scored in every quarter. The maturity and the confidence of this senior really showing here tonight. He hit that one, and it's a five-point Panther lead. Scott Radiker still adamant that his hit man went straight up. Cam Radiker kicks it outside to Mason Bales in River. And a timeout called by Northridge. It's sponsored by the Middlebury Community Schools. 3.06 to go in regulation. Northwood by two on 46. This edition of the 46th Game of the Week being brought to you in part by API St. Andrews. 31 years of success. They're a little bit fired up for this one here in Napanee tonight as the Northwood students have turned out in droves and they're watching the fourth quarter sponsored by Yoder Stutzman Plumbing, Heating and Cooler. And if you're looking for your new dream home, embrace the pace in Napanee's newest neighborhood development, Wellfield Community. The multi-generational development by R. Yoder Construction offers villa options along with single family and estate home properties, all designed to suit your unique taste and lifestyle. Construction and home sales have begun, and you can start your journey at wellfieldcommunity.com. A 54-52 Northwood lead with 3.06 to go. And the Panthers have the basketball. Keegan Stats will inbound for Northwood. Mason Bales now with 21 points for Northridge. Six here in the fourth quarter. <laughs> Near steal there. Aiden Johnson was able to deflect that one out of bounds. As you see, Scott Radiker, 23 years of coaching overall, his sixth here in Middlebury. A foul called even before the ball was inbounded. And it's going to be on Hayden Johnson. Uh, Imag Imagineering Finishing Technologies in South Bend is globally known as the knowledge source for metal finishing solutions like the teams in this game. Imagineering is always working towards a great finish. Thank you, Imagineering, for your sport of high school sports on 46. Keegan stats to Tyler Rash. Northridge has tied it once tonight. They've never led. Bales down the baseline, couldn't get it. Shaw is hammered on the way up by Tyler Rosh. But let's take another look from Springer Dental Care at what happened at the other end as Rosh looked headed for a dunk and Shoal denies him from behind. <laughs> Shoal is having a fantastic fourth quarter here. He's only a 54% foul shooter, and he misses the first here. Majestic Security is proud to support the student athletes of Northridge High School. Good luck to the Raiders. Whether you're in need of a professional security officer for your business, home, or event, loss prevention program, or night deposit escorts, Majestic Security provides the highest level of security. Better known, honest, and professional, Majestic Security, MajesticSecurity.com. One point Northwood lead, two and a half to go. Stats around the double team. Here's Ethan Wolf. 
hawked by Hayden Johnson. Ross was trying to spin to the back door, but he's been well covered up. Now Ross gets it, tried to spin move, then a step back. Oh, that's been tough. I'm trying to tell you, he's got more than just the inside game, and you show it right there with a mid-range fadeaway jumper. Call Bob Seeger, because those were some night moves by Tyler Roche. Bales for the tie. Short, Raider skies for the rebound. Wolf comes the other way. And Stats nearly lost it off his foot. And a timeout called by Northwood will take it as well. Minute 26 to go in regulation. The Panthers clinging to a three-point lead, trying to hang on to the oh, NLC no. lead on 46. <laughs>
they're not going to be in basketball shape until likely after Christmas. I asked him that question yesterday. He goes, off the record. And I go, <laughs> off the record? Come on now, we understand. Two-point game here in Napa Knee and a foul called on Mason Bales, but that's only the fourth on Northridge. You got to get the five for free throws here with the new rule in high school basketball. By the way, the third foul on Bales, which could be a factor, this one goes to overtime. Hayden Johnson checks in. Dylan Springer checks out. Keegan Stats and Northwood try to hang on for dear life in this one and get their third straight game, third straight win against their county rivals, run their winning streak to five in this season. Stats with 10 points. Raider to Seth Russell. He got hammered by Bales, but Northridge is okay with that. Russell is a 63% free throw shooter and has not scored a point tonight. Well, and you're going to have to foul eventually. At this point, with the way they were moving the ball, you weren't getting the steal, so you're going to have to foul. So that's a good one. At 17 seconds left, even if he makes both, you still have time to get two possessions. The three-sport athlete misses the first. So Northridge will at least have a chance to tie with a three. And they might be able to win it with a three here. If Russell can't hit this one, but he did. So the Raiders need a three. Will Northwood come out and foul them? They have a foul to give. Scott Radiker wants a timeout. It's sponsored by the Middlebury Community Schools. Scott Radiker wanted to get that to half court before he called that timeout. Five seconds did come off the clock, so might be too much time to go for a two-pointer here. They may be setting up for the three-point play. Let's see what they decide to do here in the huddle. Reminder, even if you're snowed in this weekend, we've got Big Ten basketball for you on the radio. The Purdue Boilermakers trying to bounce back from that loss at Lincoln. Well, they won't play Indiana until Tuesday night. You know what they get on Saturday afternoon? A visit from the Penn State Nittany Lions Saturday at 2.15. That's on 103.1 FM. And then Tuesday night, Purdue and Indiana from the Assembly Hall in Bloomington at 7 o'clock. We'll have both of those for you on 103.1 FM. Meanwhile, here in the Panther pit, Bo Hunt, I want to come to you for a Bills heating courtside report. I'm wondering, Scott Radiker obviously has to dial up a three here. Are you of the belief, if you're Northwood, that you try to foul here to prevent the three from going up? Up on him. I think the biggest thing is you really have to get up defensively on him. Play tight, and if he foul, you foul, but don't let him even get a shot off, I think is the biggest thing. Well, remember, they had a four-point play earlier, so that's the last thing you want is the foul on a three-point attempt. Hayden Johnson, you see the clock. Stats came out and did foul him. And remember, Northwood had a foul to give. Now there's only 5.9 seconds left, and the Raiders have to inbound again. Well, and that was a great foul because you could see that Johnson wasn't going to be able to get a shot off, or at least wasn't going to attempt one probably from half court. Went out there, and they lost six seconds on it as we get another timeout here by Northridge brought to you by Middlebury Community Schools. And again, good foul there. The next one would be free throws, but that's okay for Northwood because as long as it's not a three-point, or even if it's a foul off the ball, you know, you're, they can't tie it with two free throws. If you like this rivalry, we've got another one just over on US 33 next weekend as the Westview Warriors and Fairfield Falcons renew their hostilities between those two great communities. We'll have it for you Friday night at 11 and Saturday morning at 9. Westview with a terrific season at 8-2. One of the two losses, or one of the few losses for Northwood already this year. And if you didn't get enough basketball this weekend, how about this one Saturday night at 9? Grace, 16-0, 6-0 in the Crossroads League, ranked number one. Bethel, Drew Lutz, a lot of local kids having a great year, even though they lost to Marion Wednesday night. We'll have it for you from the White Camp Center. Craig Heatherly will join us for that one. Should be a lot of fun, a lot of great basketball coming up in January on 46. And we might have a lot of great basketball left here tonight because 5.9 seconds left. Northridge going to look for the three-pointer here and an opportunity to tie this game and potentially force the game to overtime. Hey, we had one earlier this week, so why not? The thing is, on this Northridge team, 
just about everybody but Scholl capable of hitting the three. So a lot of good options out there for Scott Radiker. Let's see what he dials up here and let's see if Aaron Wolf tries to foul before the shot. Tipped away and out of bounds. Northridge has it back with 4.9. Didn't lose too much time there. Although it switches the side you're inbounding now, which could affect your play a little bit. I think you just flip, flip the it. play, put it in a mirror. Scholl wants to throw. He's got Johnson, and Johnson is fouled right away before he could even think of putting up a shot, and that puts him on the line for two. That, to me, these days is the play. Well, especially in that situation where you play good enough defense that you're forcing them to just try to get it in before the five second violation. And then they're put in possession to just try to catch the ball. They can't be in a position to try to shoot off the catch immediately. Johnson makes the first free throw, but they can't tie here unless he misses and they make it. So he's gonna try to make it, then they're gonna foul right away and send Northwood back to the line. Well, does he try to make it or does he try nah, to miss it. and hope that Scholl or Pick Cranston, see, he's trying for the miss, but he didn't hit the rim. Yeah, I, I don't like that because I don't think you're getting the rebound for Tyler. So I would probably just make it and then hope Foul they- right away and try to get a three-pointer yeah. coming these. There's still time, I mean, 3.8 seconds is enough time to move the ball up and hoist the three at the buzzer because you would have been down by worse three points and now it could be over. And it's knocked out of bounds. Ooh. It went off Northridge according to the officials and Scott Radiker says it hit Ethan Wolf right in the chin. We'll see if we've got it on the Springer Dental Care replay. We've got an end zone shot. That's hard mm. to tell. That you couldn't tell. That's not conclusive, but here we go. I can see Scott's point. There's Russell. Contact. No foul. Northwood wins it. 59 57. Wow. What it, a ball it, game it, here it, in Napanee. We'll see what happened at the end of the game here on the Springer Dental Care replay. And one of the reasons Scott Radiker is a little bit hot at the end of this game, the inbounds pass coming to Russell. Yeah. And Radiker wanted a charging call made there, and there wasn't. Well, and at worst case, call a foul. And at least it keeps the game in play and free throws. So the final score, Northwood 59, Northridge 57. We're back to talk with our player of the game and look at our electrifying play of the game after this on 46. Thanks for watching the WHME TV 46 High School Basketball Game of the Week. Brought to you by... Everybody can exhale now at the Panther pit after a 59-57 Northwood win over Northridge that kept the Panthers atop the Northern Lakes Conference. Chuck Freeby and Angelo DiCarlo from atop the pit, and this one lived up to billing. Absolutely. A two-point game came down to the finish. Wild sequence, and unfortunately for Northridge, uh, second week in a row where they, they lose in the final seconds. Really tough for a young group. That has two really difficult games coming next week when they face uh, Penn and Mishawaka. But for Northwood, now five wins in a row, really starting to click and show why they're ranked number 10 in Class 3A. And the guy that really delivered for them tonight, especially in the fourth quarter, he had 19 points overall, five block shots. Tyler Rosh is our player of the game, standing by now with Bo Hunt. Standing by with our player of the game, Tyler Rosh. First off, congratulations on the victory. Came down to the wire there. 19 points, almost a triple-double for you. Just talk about this victory tonight. Oh, uh, yeah, it means a lot to us. Uh, still undefeated in the conference. Uh, Northridge was a really good team, and uh, we knew we could pull through, and we did. You guys come in, lose a lot of players from last year. You guys won five in a row now. Like you said, you're undefeated in the conference. What does this mean as you guys are moving forward to be 5-0 and since our, I have five wins in a row? Oh, uh, yeah, I'd say it's, it's a good uh, stand, standpoint for us. Or like, and... Uh, I don't know, it was just hit our groove, I guess. We've done well ever since. Talk about hitting your groove. You added three other players in double figures. Just talk about your teammates and how you, well you guys are playing together this year. Yeah, we've been playing really well. We, we have some really good chemistry. We're always off, off the court together as well. We hang out a lot. Hey, congratulations to being our player of the game. Best of luck to you. Thank you. Back to you guys. 
Meanwhile, Mason Bales comes up with our electrical workers electrifying play of the game, courtesy of Local 153. Bales with 21 points, but none more exciting than one at the end of the first half. Yeah, it helped them get back into the game in the end of the first half. Got the steal, the penetration, and the slam for Mason Bales. As you take a look at it one more time here for the dunk for the Raiders. Brought to us by the electrical workers of Local 153 keeping our communities brighter. And what a bright night this was for high school basketball in Northern Indiana. A great game between two terrific programs. And guess what? We're not done with basketball on TV 46 this weekend. More coming to you from the White Camp Center on Saturday as Grace takes on Bethel. What a great rivalry that will be. Can't wait to bring it to you. Our thanks to our TV 46 crew who really came together for a quick Thursday night effort led by our production manager, Dean Korsmo, who had Angelo DiCarlo just wooing all over the place tonight. The lights were on for Champagne, Tony Beltran, Tommy Ward, and Ryan Fitzpatrick doing a wonderful job on audio. Reminder, Saturday at 9 on TV 46, it's the Grace College Lancers taking on the Bethel Pilots. We'll have it for you from the White Camp Center in the next Friday night, more high school basketball. A Northeast Corner Conference clash as the Westview Warriors and Fairfield Falcons renew their rivalry. We'll have it for you on the live stream at 745 and on TV 46 Friday night 11 Saturday morning at 9. Now for Angelo DiCarlo and Bo Hunt, Chuck Freeby, the final Northwood 59, Northridge 57. So long from Napanee.